are at the famous Grey Gardens in East Hampton, New York, with the current owner, Sally Quinn, who purchased the house from the famous little Edie Beale. Sally, why did you buy Grey Gardens? Well, look at it. How could you not? We were looking for a house all over the Hamptons to buy, and I walked in and the real estate woman said, I will do anything to sell a house, but I will not go in there. You're on your own. Because the cats, there were 32 cats and raccoons and everything. You can't even imagine the smell, the cat smell, and it was garbage piled everywhere. It was, it was unlivable. So little Edie greeted me at the door. I just said, this is wonderful. And she said, it's yours. I know that you are the right person for this house. And then she kind of did this little pirouette. And she sort of turned around the hall like this. And she said, all it needs is a coat of paint. <laughs> the day that my mother and I closed on the house, we came in. It was the worst November day, freezing cold and blustery wind and the trees howling and, you know. And we went out there and all the glass was broken in the sunroom and it was very eerie and mysterious. And all of a sudden we felt the presence of someone. I looked up and there was this old woman standing there. And my mother and I sort of went like this and she said, my name is Lois and I have been sent here by Big Edie, who at that point was dead. Quite dead to give you a message. And I said, what is that? And she said, Big Edie wants you to know that she chose you for this house. And she chose you because she knew that you would restore it to its original beauty. And she is going to make sure that everything goes perfectly. And the furnishings in the house? Tell me. Almost everything in the house was here in the attic. And I had to restore everything, as you can imagine. It was all in terrible shape. Sally, I'm really dying to sneak around and see how all these design elements came together. Sally Quinn has done an awesome job in capturing the Beale aesthetic and spirit in this room. For instance, these wicker chairs, this one with a gothic top, and this one with balls and an inverted top. Don't be afraid to use wicker in any room in the house. And here, books play an important design element. They're not just reference. They dominate the entire major wall of the living room. Chaise loungers are not just the domain of the bedroom. Use unexpected furniture in unexpected locations. Here, these two chaise lounges, originally owned by the Beals, are on either side of the principal fireplace. Who wouldn't want to recline in front of the fireplace in your living room? The sunroom is really unique and special. It brings the outside elements in by way of shingles on the walls and diamond-shaped windows and terracotta floors, as well as floral patterns on the textiles. The most wonderful thing about this sunroom is the perspective it has of the fabled gardens. Little Edie loved to watch Tarzan films. And that's probably why this garden reminds me of a jungle, wild and overgrown. But in every jungle, there needs to be a clearing. And this garden's clearing is here with two chairs where Little Edie and Big Edie sat. Here, the Buckleys, who were flourished to the Beals for 50 years, have recreated a beautiful landscape in a classic pavilion. Use your china. Take them out of the cabinet, outside, into the air, into the garden. This home James plate is absolutely beautiful. Every one of them speak to the garden, but they're real. They're china. Use them and enjoy them. I can't leave Grey Gardens without showing you my two favorite things. This children's thatch cottage, which is also perfect for adult entertaining with beautiful fabrics and china. And over my shoulder, the resting place of the family dog, Spot Beale. Let Grey Gardens inspire you. Embrace the old. Embrace that which is wild and eccentric. Grey Gardens is an aesthetic that you must consider strongly. Just because it's shabby doesn't mean it isn't awfully sophisticated. <laughs>